going to look at Judges chapter 6, and I don't know how, long, how far I'll get through this story, but it really doesn't matter. We're going to go through the story of a man that was called to do a great work. And he didn't think he was anything. It caught him by surprise. But God called him and he says, you're the one that I'm calling to deliver the people. But before we could talk about reaching the one, I want to talk to you about the condition of the one. So you'll know why it's so important for you and I to be aware of the condition of the hurting people that are around us. They are literally enslaved with thoughts of suicide, anger, deep depression. They're lost, they're confused. And if they die in their condition, they not only die in slavery to the enemy, they die and they're separated from God for eternity and they end up in a real hell. And the only ones, the only ones that can stop them from going to hell for eternity, the only ones that can deliver them from the bondage that they're in, the only ones that can set them free from their addiction, the only ones that can help them find their purpose are believers like you and I. We are the ones that can reach those ones. Right now, God is aware of them. And he says in the scripture, the harvest is ripe. How does he know they're ripe? The people are crying out, help, help, help. There's little girls that are being raped in their own homes. While we're eating, watching Netflix, busy with our lives, there's a little girl tonight that's going to be abused by your father, abused by a guy that's visiting the house, by, a, by mom's boyfriend tonight. There's kids right now, young adults, people that are hopeless, they're done. They're fantasizing, not about 2021, they're fantasizing about dying. There's someone else in a dark room right now ready to shoot up and, uh, and overdose tonight. Their pain is so severe. They're going through so much pain. They'd rather die and numb themselves. And God says, I hear them crying out to me. Who's going to go rescue them? So what God does, he reaches out to his people. He speaks to them and lets them know those that I'm after are crying out. They're hurting and no one is responding. Who will go? And I pray that there'll be a church, the way we're all outreach, that wakes up in this time and says, I, I want to get this. We're not talking about the way we're all outreach. We're talking about a family church. We are an army that God has brought together to go out there and reach those that are crying out. So we're going to look at this story. And we're just going to look at their condition. We're going to look at the spirits that are dominating them. I heard this week, there's a new company, a pharmaceutical company that's trying to help people get set free from addiction. And they said 
that of all the programs that are out there, only 5%, they have a 5% success rate. 95% of the programs that are out there don't help someone break their addiction. Because the reality is, I guarantee you this, they don't have a 95% success rate, they, I mean, a, a failure rate. They have a 100% failure rate. They're just saying they got 5% so they can continue getting money. Because the only person that can set them free is Jesus Christ. And he says, for the who, who the Son sets free is free indeed. We can do what no amount of money can do. We can do what doctors can't do. We can do what these pharmaceutical companies can't do. We can bring salvation in the mighty name of Jesus. But it's time for the church to wake up again. In Judges chapter 6 verse 1, it says this, the Israelites... And I want you to get this. These are God's people. Say it with me. God's people did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Midianites for seven years. And I said, what was the evil that they did? The evil that these people did is they abandoned God. And they began to worship the idols that were in the land that God delivered to them. So they used their blessing to begin to worship false gods. This is the condition of our country. We've used our freedom to worship false images of God. We worship our immorality, we worship our lusts, we worship people, but we, fought, we failed to worship God. We'll give our time to entertainment. Spend hours on social media worshiping, spending time and no time for God. And this is what the scripture says. If you choose to go your own way, this is what God is saying. I can't stop you. But as you go, understand, whatever you're, is leading you but God is going to end up putting you in major bondage. There's no free sin. Sin comes with chains. Sin comes with demons. Sin comes with death. Sin comes with loss. Sin comes with mental illness. Sin comes with emotional destruction. Sin destroys relationships. How ignorant can we be? We have more information today on what sin does, what drugs do, what the damage of living a immoral life does, but yet we think, I'm going to get away with it. Well, they thought this too. They were called Israelites. You know what their name means? God prevails. But instead of God prevailing... They ended up being conquered. See, they couldn't say that there were more than conquerors. They could only say this, we were just conquered. And what conquered them? It was their lust. It was the love for the world. It was a system set up to destroy them morally. They went into a land and God gave them victory over all the armies of the land. And what defeated them was not the armies of the land. What defeated them was their lifestyle. They abandoned God. 
They abandoned his values. They abandoned the word. They abandoned church. They abandoned worship. And they got accustomed to living without God. And God says, you must have forgot who delivered you. You must have forgot who called you. You must have forgot who created you. You must have forgot where you came from. That's what happened. But there's a condition. They were now given up to bondage or slavery of the enemy. Now let's see what happens. The Midianites were so cruel that the Israelites made hiding places for themselves in the mountains, caves, and strongholds. Whenever the Israelites planted their crops, marauders from Midian, Amalek, and the people of the east would attack Israel. Camping in the land, camping in the land, camping in the land. You know what this means? Demons are camping in our homes. Camping. Why are they able to camp? They're able to pitch their tent, put on a little fire, and hang out. Because there's no one there to remove them. The enemy's camping out in our cities, camping out in our country. And Christians nowadays are so immoral, they can't do nothing about it. There's almost like a devil saying, do something about it then. But I already conquered you in your private time. You're coming to me and worshiping me in the private time, in the dark places. I already know you. You have no authority to stop me from camping. Camping in the land, in their land. Not in the, not in the, not in the land that they live in. They were camping in the land they don't live in. They left the Israelites, look at this. Oh, no, look. They're camping in the land and destroying crops as far as Gaza. They left the Israelites with nothing to eat, taking all their sheep, goats, cattle, and donkeys. These enemy hordes coming with their livestock and tents were as thick as locusts. They arrived on droves of camels, too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was stripped bare. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. Let's stop right there for a second. They gave in to the sin. They gave in to the temptation. They began to be and act like the world. But they didn't realize that they were being conquered. Because the only thing that was giving them victory was their relationship with God. The only thing that was keeping the enemy at bay was the power of God in their lives. It wasn't their army strength. It wasn't their intelligence. It wasn't how smart they, what smart they were, how much money they had. What was giving them victory was their relationship with God. And they lost it. The enemy right now is after your relationship with God. Because if he conquers your relationship with God, with the worldly offers, you're conquered. 
Your kids are conquered. And now demons can camp out in your home. So this is what they were under. They were under four spirits. The first spirit that they were under was a spirit of strife and cruelty. Now, the word Midianite means strife. It means bitter conflict. It means, it means disunity. It means quarreling. It means fighting. They were under a spirit because once they broke away from God, it would not only harm their relationship with God, it, they would now harm all their relationships. And that's why the stats of divorce are the same in the church than outside the church. Because when you give in to, comp when you give in to compromise, this is what happens. A spirit of strife begins to rule over you. Nobody's getting along. Everybody's fighting. That's what's happening in our nation. We are under a Midianite spirit. We cannot get along. And what's the craziest thing, there's a demon that's attached to politics and is making us all crazy. You better stop calling yourself a Republican or calling yourself a Democrat, associating yourself, come on, with a man. You need to start associating yourself with the kingdom of heaven again and get rid of that Midianite strife in spirit. We got brothers and sisters that are fighting against each other, acting like they could actually change who the president is. You can vote, but that's it. Get busy saving souls. Get busy living a holy life and rebuke the spirit of strife. So they were under a spirit of strife. And I want you to think about this. Right now, in homes across America. There's a midnight spirit of strife, bitter conflict, anger, quarreling, hate right in the home. And what they're trying to do, they're trying to eliminate it. How can we begin to get along? And the only one that can set you free from that spirit of anger, that spirit of hate, that spirit of fighting, that spirit of arguing, that spirit of unforgiveness is the name above every name. It's the name of Jesus, your deliverer. This year we made a resolution. We're going to get along. No, you ain't. Because until you get delivered from the spirit of strife, strife will be in your life. But they're also under a spirit of cruelty. Now, cruelty is an interesting word because when you look, look at the word cruelty, it means willfully causing pain or distress to others and enjoying the pain or distress of others. I want you to understand how ugly demons are. Once you're submitted to a demon, you're submitted to a spirit of cruelty. It enjoys your suffering. It laughs at your bondage. It mocks you when you're out there getting drunk, you're fighting, you're arguing. There's demons saying this or laughing. Ha, 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 look at them. Losses, family dying, overdoses, suicide, demons laughed. They love it. And the more we live ungodly lives, the more we love cruelty. 
yesterday in a Walmart. 11, four girls from 11 to 14 years old. They attack a 15-year-old girl at Walmart in broad daylight and film it. They get knives from the knife section. They find the girl. They bum rush her. And they start stabbing her to death. And after they stabbed her to death, one of the young girls, 14 years old, said this, I stabbed the bee in her heart. The day before yesterday, New York City, a group of young adults rush one person. They beat him up. They film it. And you could see them coming and just stomping the person out. What we'll do for our gods, what we'll do for our anger, what we'll do for our pleasure. And I want you to understand this. This is the result of demons being able to camp out with no resistance in the home. Spirits of murder, division, perversion, bondage, torment. Suicide, mental illness, sickness, despair, hopelessness are there. Generational curses are there. And they're being passed on from one generation to the next while we're zombified. Walking dead people with no relationship with God. We are in the last days, church. And the Bible says in these last days, love will wax cold. The Bible says in the last days, God's going to cut the day short, lest the very elect be deceived. I come against every spirit of deception, every spirit of spiritual blindness, every spirit of spiritual deafness that doesn't allow the church to hear what God is saying. A spirit of strife, a spirit of cruelty. We are more cruel than we've ever been as a society. Parents abusing their kids. We've become careless. We've become careless. Christians that have lost their love, walking offended everywhere they go. That's one spirit they were under. The other spirit they were under was a spirit of fear. The scripture says that there were... They were creating places to hide. They were hiding from the enemy. You know what's a sad thing about a spirit of fear? When you have a spirit of fear, all you expect is harm, hurt. You don't expect anything good because it's not a spirit of faith that's leading you. It's a spirit of fear. And of course they had reason to fear. They were in bondage, in despair, in pain for seven years straight. Nothing good was happening. There wasn't one testimony in the seven years. There wasn't one good report in the seven years. There wasn't one person that got set free in the seven years. There was no one that got healed in the seven years. Seven years of consistent attacks, consistent bondage, consistent being under a spirits or spirits of demons that they subjected to willingly. Crazy. The spirit of fear. Hiding, running. And this is what I'm saying. We got to be aware of the spirit of fear. 
instead of running with your purpose and crying out to God and, and say, I fear not for God is with me, you'll find yourself, if you don't watch it, hiding. They were under a spirit of fear. They were also under a spirit of destruction and poverty. Now, the reason I'm telling you this is the very people that we're reaching are under these spirits. Strife, cruelty. They're under spirits of fear and anxiety. And the only answer is Jesus in you. That's it. That's it. So they're under now a spirit of destruction and poverty. Now, I say destruction and poverty work together. Now, this is what happens. The Israelites planted their crops. What, what this means is that they knew how to get a harvest. So they weren't experiencing harvest, not because they didn't know how to do it. They were not getting a harvest because there was no rain. It had nothing to do with the weather. It had nothing to do with the earth. It had nothing to do with them working hard. The problem was that the enemy would attack Israel and destroy their crops. What's interesting is they wouldn't steal the crops, they would destroy the crops. A spirit of destruction doesn't want anything from you. The only thing the spirit of destruction wants to do is annihilate and destroy you. That's all it wants to do. It's there to just destroy your progress, destroy your work, destroy your prosperity, destroy your family, destroy your ministry, destroy your health, destroy your mind, destroy your kids. It's a spirit. It's real. It destroys. It's a real spirit that they were under. And they could do nothing about it. The people that we're reaching have got so used to the spirit, they are not cooperating with the spirit of destruction. And what we call it is self-destruction. They don't need the demons to destroy them. They're destroying themselves now. They, have, they are now walking in one mind and one accord with the spirit of destruction. They are now walking demons because they think like the demons that they've been associated with or exposed to. Self-destruction. Have you ever been in a place of self-destruction that you start moving ahead and somehow you sabotage yourself? And if you're doing that, this is the reason. The devil's convinced you that you don't deserve good. You don't deserve a healthy relationship. You don't deserve to move ahead. You don't deserve to succeed. You don't deserve to speak up and talk about Christ. So he has you convinced. So every time you get real close, you destroy yourself. That's not normal. That's a demon. It's also a spirit of poverty. This spirit reduced, the, reduced them to starvation. The spirit of poverty and destruction is a spirit of reduction. It reduces. Now, to reduce means to bring down to a lower rank, to bring down to a lower rank in dignity, in number, in size. It means to depress, push down. Could it be that the reason we're not moving ahead, there's a spirit of poverty and destruction and reduction on your life that doesn't allow you to advance. You feel like you're doing it right. You're working hard. But it always ends up a minus. Why can I get some movement here? 
there's people in our neighborhoods that they can't get ahead because there's a spirit of destruction and poverty that causes them to go from one generation to the next generation and every generation gets worse. Reduction. Not growth, not prosperity, not excitement, not power, no stories, no testimonies. We're stuck in the same place, running hard, but going nowhere. It's a spirit of supernatural failure that we're going to get rid of tonight. We're going to get rid of all these spirits tonight, in the name of Jesus. And the last spirit that they were dealing with is a spirit of hopelessness. They became overwhelmed and hopeless. The enemy came in like a flood. They were like locusts. They were so great, they were too numerous to count. And they stayed until the land was tripped bare. Everything, by the time we're done, it's all gone. Everything that they thought they had, we are going to take it away. The fruit trees, strip bare. The fields, they were bringing up the tomatoes, strip bare. They would just, they would just step on, on all, the, all the vegetation. Year after year, they got to the point that they would try to hide their food. They couldn't even eat because the enemy took everything away from them. I will, I'm going to get you this. A life apart from God will finally end up in a place that you're empty, stripped, bare, all alone. Someone has to say this. I am the one that's going to reach the ones that are out there. Because I have the one that can help them overcome every spirit that they've been under. I serve the one that conquered the grave. I serve the one that gave me authority to do something about it. I am under the one and if I submit to the Lord, I can resist the devil and he must flee in the mighty name of Jesus. The church is needed more than ever. You're needed more than ever. I want to end it with the last verse. So they, this is Judges 6, 6. So Israel was reduced to starvation by the Midianites. The very gods that they served and worshiped because they thought it was so much fun ended up destroying them stripping them and getting to a point of total starvation but look at this this is the key verse then the Israelites cried out to the Lord for help When they cried out for the Lord to the Lord, because of Midian, the Lord sent a prophet to the Israelites and he said, this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you out of slavery in Egypt. I did it before. 
I rescued you from the Egyptians and from all that oppressed you. Let me introduce myself again to you. I drove out your enemies and gave their land to you. I told you, I am the Lord your God. And what God is saying, I did it then and I'm ready to do it again. God is ready right now to raise up a group of people that are going to say, bring some good news. Come on, God raises up a prophet. God raises up a believer and lets people know it's good news. You called upon the Lord and when you called upon the Lord, he heard you. And I'm here to let you know that that same God that delivered you from the Egyptians, that delivered you from bondage, come on, that part of the Red Sea is right now here available for you and me. Let's all stand up. I, I could tell we're in war here. I, right now, there's demons that are terrified. They are upset. I, they're probably having a meeting right now. <laughs> what could we do? We got to get them disunified. We're not going to be disunified. We're going to be here tomorrow. This is just a found. I just laid some groundwork. That's all we did today. We just need to lay some authority and groundwork here. This is a holy moment. You know what I think? This moment belongs to God. This is an historical moment. This is an eternal moment. There are people that you're going to reach that have a spirit of cruelty over them, torment. Spirits have been annihilated and stripping them, destroying them. And they've been crying out to God, Lord, help me. And as soon as they cried out for help, God raised up a prophet. Because your breakthrough starts with a word from God. You know what the prophet was saying? You don't have to continue living like this because you have a God that can deliver you from this. I got good news for someone today. You do not need to continue living in strife, arguing, fighting, bickering, bitter, Tonight it could end. We got to cry out to God. Do you know the beginning of a breakthrough for anyone is for them to finally be done? Done? I'm done. Done enough to cry out to Jesus, say, save me, Jesus. Because God will allow you to be in a place that will cause you to finally cry out again to God. Help me. Save me. I'm tired of these demons oppressing me. Has to stop. They cried out because of the Midianites. Because of the cruelty. For some people, a tough time, a difficult season is good for you. Being stripped of everything you trusted in is good for you. Because maybe it could get you to the point that you finally again cry and say, Jesus, help me. Forgive me for abandoning you, walking away from you, and moving with an agreement with these spirits that have been destroying me and my family. I'm done. I'm done. And as soon as you cry out, God immediately responds. You know what God was saying? Finally, seven years. And the first prayer I got from this whole nation 
just happen right now. And I could just imagine, God, come on, someone. You're, I could do something about it. Cruelty. Fear. You look at your future and no hope. You just see more of the same old thing. God wants to give you your dreams back. God wants to give you vision back. God wants to give you purpose back. God wants to set you free. Or maybe you just feel totally hopeless. I'm going to pray right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to pray for you. We're going to pray for you. That God will set you free. So you can help others get set free. Say with me, I'm the one. And if you don't, I want you guys, if you don't go, they stay in their pain. I'm going to give you an example today. We gave groceries to a family. Larry was telling me about this. That there's a family in San Bernardino that their whole family has COVID. But they not only have COVID, they're starving. They have no food. They've been starving with no food for right around four days. COVID and no food. They call Larry up and Larry says, I'll do something about it. So he went to the grocery store and bought him $200 worth of groceries, right? And he told me, he goes, Pastor, I've been praying for God to show me the one I'm supposed to reach. And I told that family, you'll never have to worry about food ever again because I'm in your life. I'm adopting you and God heard your prayers. God gave you, and you know what they did? They began to cry and they said, I thank God for you. I thank God for the way world outreach. Thank you for acknowledging my pain, my hurt. I was starving. Okay, now, if that's you tonight, now, I want you to understand, tomorrow night's going to be off the hook. Tonight, we're, I want you, how many understand God's laying down some groundwork tonight? This wasn't a night to get all hyped up. This was a night to declare war on the enemy. We're in a real battle to, come on, to win some real souls and help some real people that need some real freedom. But if that's you tonight, you're saying, Pastor, I want freedom tonight. I want to be free. I want to get rid of this strife. I want to get rid of this fear. I want to get rid of everything that's holding me back from succeeding. I feel like I'm stuck. I feel like I'm that, I feel like I'm that hamster on the wheel running, running, running. I'm tired, but not going nowhere. If that's you, it's time for you to do what they did. Call on God. This message is the prophet coming to you. God raised up this word tonight because he loves you so much. You are a world changer. You are a history maker. You are not an accident. You have purpose. You could go out there and be a hero to someone all year long. But if that's you, say, Pastor, that's me. I need prayer right now. I need a breakthrough right now. Leave your seat and come up real quick. If you're in the overflow room, leave the overflow and come over here. I need a breakthrough right now. I need a breakthrough right now. I need a breakthrough from my family right now. I feel like there's some things camping out in my life that got to go. I feel like I've submitted myself. I feel I'm in bondage. I'm a, I have an addiction. My family's not working out. I feel like I go from bad to worse. I, I feel far away from God. It's time for me to come back. Come on, church. Let's give the Lord a hand. Come on, God speaking.
I'm going to let everybody know here. We love you. God loves you. I'm going to tell you something that maybe you haven't heard for a long time. God is proud of you. Proud of you. The reason he's been telling you, get away from that sin. Get away from that lifestyle. It's not because he doesn't want you to have fun. He doesn't want you to be oppressed. He doesn't want demons to rule over your life. He doesn't want you to be separated from him. That's all. And without God, there's no breakthrough. And I'm offering you religion here. I'm offering you a, a relationship with the power of God, God himself. He loves you. He takes you serious. So serious that he sent his only son to die for you. You know what that means? Why are you beating yourself up? Why are you living in guilt and shame and regret? When all that was already paid for. Why are you living in fear like you don't have a God? Why? Tonight, we're going to break up with the Midianite gods. And we're going to serve the one true God. You know what that means? You got to give up some of your pleasures that the devil, those little biscuits that the devil's put in your life that you get addicted to. God wants, God says, I want to set you free. Because every time he shows you one of those big little biscuits, you come like a little puppy running. You're under control. And God says, no. I did not create you to be dominated. I create you to, created you to dominate. I created you to be free so you can help some people get set free. You're the one. We're the one that's going to reach the ones out there. We're going to do it. This year, you're going to live a life of purpose. This year, you're going to have a disciple. That means you're going to reach someone. They're going to be standing right next to you, and you're going to reach them for Jesus this year. It's going to be serious. This year, you're going to pull somebody out of the clutches of Satan and say, Satan, let him go now. And he's going to go. So we're going to pray. Now, if you've not given your life to Jesus, this is what I know. I'm not offering you religion. I'm not telling you, come up here to join the church. You're coming up here to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And I want you to know, know this. One day you're going to die. Stop playing with your life. And after you die, the Bible says to every man's appointed today to die. After that is judgment. Every single person will, hold, will give an account for their lives, give an account for their decisions, give an account for their, 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 their words. And if you stand before God without Jesus, you're done. You can't say I'm a pretty good person because no one's good. We're all sinners. I'm a sinner. You're a sinner. We all messed up. I need God to save me. The only thing that was going to save these people is calling on Jesus. Something's going to save you. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent of your sins and turn to Jesus. Don't play. Get committed to follow Christ for the rest of your life. Say it with me. Follow Christ for the rest of your life. Okay, let's pray. We're going to pray right now. They said a simple prayer. They cried out to God, Lord, help us. God responded. You don't have to say a long prayer. Just help me. And he helps you. He's not here to judge you. He's not here to put you down. He loves you. He wants to help you. He wants to fill you with his presence, his spirit, love. Let's pray right now. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, say, Jesus, I give my life to you. Forgive me for abandoning you for my temporary sin. Set me free from every spirit of darkness. I command 
every spirit of the enemy to leave now. I repent, Lord, of all my sins. Cleanse me, Lord. Make me new. I choose today to forgive everyone that hurt me. I forgive you. I let it go. And when you just said, I forgive you, this is what you did. That person that hurts you, that abandoned you, that abused you, their, their picture just came up in your mind. And also there's a spirit of hate, of anger that's attached to that. They're not here right now, and you're, but they've been in your life because of that hurt. You hate them. And today you're going to get set free from the spirit that controlled them. I want you to think about that person right now. And I want you to say, I forgive you for what you did to me. I let it go. Set me free, Lord, from every spirit of strife, of bondage, of anger, of unforgiveness. In the name of Jesus, I renounce every spirit of cruelty, abuse. I command every spirit of strife, of fear, hopelessness, suicide, backsliding, to go in the name of Jesus. Jesus, fill me now with your Holy Spirit and power. From this day forward, I will live for you. Send me to reach the one that's hurting, that needs freedom. Use me, Lord. I'm ready. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a big hand. Come on, church.